Who's this man? What's he doing? Is he trustworthy? Does anyone on this street know him, or is he a stranger? He's going to call on someone. Does he know them? Will they know him? Here's another stranger. Has he got business to attend to here? Does he look like he knows where he's going? Every street has strange visitors from time to time. Most are legitimate, looking for a particular house for a specific reason. Delivering something. Come to do a job of work. Here to help with digital switchover, maybe. But not everyone in the street is here with a legitimate purpose. Regrettably, some are bogus callers. The very worst sort are would-be distraction burglars. They are looking for homes occupied by elderly people. Their aim is to mislead and confuse those people into allowing them into their homes. Typical distraction burglar uh, is driving around suburban areas looking to target properties occupied by elderly people, normally using a smart saloon car, possibly on uh, false plates, uh, driving around areas um, generally very, very slowly, cul-de-sacs, any area where they think uh, they can find a target property. When the distraction burglar is reasonably confident he has found a suitable home, he will head for the front door with a range of plausible stories ready to deploy. They have a repertoire of tricks to get inside your home. They're from the water board. They don't feel well. They're checking TVs for digital switchover. Can you believe them? Or is it a con? Who's that then? Might be Betty. Hello, love. You all right? Who are you? From the lecturer. Did you get the letter? I haven't seen a letter. Oh, is your husband in? Maybe he got it. Harry, have we had a letter from the electricity? Letter? I don't know. I haven't seen your letter. It's about your electric. We think you're paying too much. We think the meter must be going around too fast. Well, we do pay a lot. Well, my job is to get the cost down, especially for you old people. Government policy. You must have read about it in the papers. I think I have. Yeah, well, come on, love. I've got all the houses in this street to do. Kitchen through here, is it? What is it, Mavis? He's come to get our electric bills down. About time. All right, Mr... Uh, what's the name again? Roberts. Mr Roberts, that's it. Just coming to examine your setup. Possible you might be paying too much. Just the two of you here, is there? Just me and the wife. All right, I thought so. Now, I could do this a lot quicker if you two can help me. So, the best place to start is in the kitchen. All right. That's great. And I'll just uh, have a look at the meter. OK. Can you switch the light on, please, Mr Roberts? That's it. Mm. And, uh, Mrs Roberts, anything else electrical in there? we got a cooker and a kettle. All right. Can you just switch the cooker on for me a minute, please? Yeah, some of those cookers weren't connected properly. Done by contractors. Have you had any problems with it? We had to have a replacement element. Yeah, that'll be it then. Weren't fitted properly. All right, can you just switch it off and on a couple of times? And Mr Roberts, can you stick on the kettle for a minute? That's it. No, I can't tell if these are the problem. Right, you know the telly in the front room? Can you switch it on and off a couple of times? And can you, Mr Roberts, turn the light on at the same time? All right. That's it. Nice and steady, so I can see if there's a pattern. Can you both come back in the kitchen a second, please? What about upstairs? I think there's an electric fire up there. No, it won't be upstairs. It's the downstairs circuits. Now, what I need you two to do is stand here and watch this light and see if it goes dim while I'm testing the things in the front room. Can you see the lights flickering at all? I think it is. I can't see it. And that's your eyes. How about now? Now we're getting somewhere, and what I need is my circuit diagram, which is back in the van. Be back in about ten minutes. 
It's a strange way to find an electrical fault, if you ask me. When nobody's asking you, Harry, the man's here to save us money. You should be glad of it. Oh, you shouldn't have left that cupboard open with a stranger in the house. And the rent money's in that basket. I didn't leave it open. Where's my glasses? I must have left them upstairs. The crimes are normally very swift. And by the time the victims realise anything's wrong, uh, the burglars have normally jumped in the car and driven off, normally on false plates. A horrible experience. The victims have lost money they can ill afford to be without, but they are also psychologically damaged. They feel stupid because they have let a stranger into their home in good faith, and he has taken advantage of them. The invasion of the home can be a long-term distressing matter. Well, I thought it was a bit strange, look, because he didn't have a badge. And he said he went round next door, which he didn't. He had nothing. And I thought, well, it can't be the electric board because they always send the letter. I said, there's a washing machine here. So we went and had a look at it. And then while we was distracted, or their backs to it, the other must have come through the back door and up the stairs. Most of the victims that uh, I've come across have been in their 80s. Um, retired for some time, uh, lived in properties for quite a long time, and um, to be, you know, have their home invaded in that fashion is, is very, very distressing. And I thought, well, there's something wrong. But I wish I'd have thought a bit quicker so I could have saved me money. You went in tears here. You was crying and said, all my money's gone. They feel that they've done something wrong when they haven't. All they've done is answer the front door. Um, which is obviously a, a big issue. And it's the pain that goes on and on and on. It's the suffering. It doesn't stop. And for months after, I still have to go and visit the victims. And they, uh, they constantly sort of refer to the fact that um, they never really get over it, which is obviously very difficult. We really appreciate how brave people have been to recall their ordeals once again for our cameras. Thank you. Those people were determined to get a message across, to try to help others to avoid experiencing the same fate. So where did those elderly householders go wrong? They were obviously too trusting. The criminals are normally very clever at identifying the properties. They've got their script and their line of patter ready to go. As soon as they've knocked on your door, they're looking to put you at a disadvantage. How should elderly householders handle things to avoid Harry and Mavis's horrible experience? First of all, uh, don't open the door. If you've got a window, take a look. If uh, you don't like the look of the person that's calling, you don't have to answer. There's, there's no need to answer the front door just because someone's knocked. Make sure your windows and doors are locked. Distraction burglars normally work in pairs. Whilst you're being engaged in conversation, an accomplice may be trying to slip round the rear of the property. Okay, the most important thing is the chain. Never open your door to a stranger. Always put the chain on. It only takes a second to put in place, and it gives you that extra security. Be wary of someone who claims to be from the water board, or is going to check your television for digital switchover. They might tell you they need help. A glass of water. Use of your phone for an emergency. Regrettably, any of these suggestions may simply be a ruse to get into your home. If a caller is legitimate, he or she will not mind at all if you take precautions before you open the door to talk to them. Through that small gap in the door, clarify that the visitor is who they say they are. Thwarting the criminal on your doorstep is the key to this offence. They don't want to be remembered by you and they don't want to leave any physical evidence such as DNA or fingerprints. If in doubt, keep them out. If they seem to have legitimate business, can they provide you with convincing proof of their legitimacy? Do they have an identity card of some sort and more importantly, do you know that it's genuine? Where's your identity card? Oh, right. There you go, love. Now hurry up, we haven't got all day. 
If they are from some big organisation, then you can phone the regional office and establish if that organisation has an agent in your neighbourhood at the moment. Don't just use a phone number that they give you. It could be an accomplice. Go and find the relevant number in the phone directory. No, I don't think so. I'm going to look it up in the book. Mrs, what's the matter with you? You're getting paid, aren't you? Shouldn't have any problems standing there for two minutes, then. And close the door while you're away. A legitimate caller won't mind. Anyone crooked will probably now walk away. And if that's the case, you need to ring the police immediately. We'd like to get to the scene before the criminals have the chance to get away from the area. The utilities companies who provide your electricity, water and gas have password schemes. Contact them to have a password created for your home for that firm. If the person at the door seems to be from the utility provider but does not know your password, contact the police. Harry and Mavis saw fit to allow the caller into their home. They were bamboozled by his patter. You must stay in control of what happens in your home. Don't leave a stranger in a room where there are valuables or money. Don't feel tempted to go and make them a cup of tea and always watch what they're doing whilst they're in your home. Remember, the battle lines are drawn on your doorstep. Once you've allowed someone into your home, you become very vulnerable. How could you make someone leave? To recap, most visitors in your street will be legitimate, reasonable people. But there is always a danger that a distraction burglar may be looking for an elderly person or couple that he could take advantage of. Don't open the door to any stranger. If you want to talk to the stranger, always use a chain lock. If they cannot prove their legitimacy, don't let them in. Call the police if you have reason to be suspicious.